Yes, and I talked a little bit about that before, but we're going to get a little bit more into it right now and show you how it works. So what are migrations? Migrations are just basically a feature of Laravel which help, help us create tables in our database, basically in auto mode, meaning that we, we have a class, we run a little PHP artisan command, and that will create the table for us with all the fields, all the columns. Let me show you. So I'm in the CMS folder right here. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go to database and then I'm going to go to migrations. And then out of the box, they, uh, Laravel comes with two migrations. All right. These are classes. All right, guys. So don't get confused. This is just classes. So it has the time and the date right here. Right. And then he has the name of that specific migration. Now, this is not the name of the table. This is the name of the migration. So we have two migrations by default. We have the user's migration and the password resets. So now if I double click on this, it's going to take me to that specific class, which is this one here, and it stands the migration. Now, this is the method. We got two methods out of the box for now, right? Maybe in other versions, we're going to have different methods, but we're going to have, we, we have the up method and the down method. So this class here creates a table in the database, right? Once we run this using the PHP artisan tool, all right? So this up method runs this static method right here, all right? Using the schema class. And we create, the first parameter is, is the, the table name. The second parameter is a function, a closure function. And let me just do that. And this closure function has a database converted into an object. And basically, for those of you that don't understand what this is, you can look up dependency injection. Basically, what we're doing here is we are, def we are writing the name of a class called Blueprint. And then after that, with no comma, we put a variable name, which is going to hold that object. This class is an object. And then we can use that object here, all right, to define certain values, all right? So this object, all right, so now this class turns into an object. You can look up dependency injection, by the way, like I, I just said. And then now we have this method right here that's called increments. And this basically is going to go to the table and create a column name ID. All right, whatever you put it here, you can change this whenever you want. Remember, this is all, all defined by default by the Laravel uh, developers, but you can change this and you can create different ones. All right. So now this column here is going to increment. Remember in PHP my admin or you know any other database, we have this first ID that inc increments every time we create a record. This is what this method is going to do. The next method, the string method, is going to give us a var char of a column name name all right then there is another of our car here name email and this has to be unique so we got this unique function here after it all right then the password limit to 60 characters and we have a, even a remember token column and a timestamp column now you can read more about this in the Laravel uh, website all right just look up um, schema uh, information and you're going to find it, all right? Or migration values or something like that. And you're going to find this, all right? Now, this down method here will drop the table. So we have the control here in our application to create tables once we have a define, we define a class, all right? So it's super simple. Now, does it mean that we have these tables available already in our application? No, it does not mean that. It means that we have the blueprint of it but we have to run it, right? So we are using XAMPP. In XAMPP, we have phpMyAdmin, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to phpMyAdmin. And I'll show you that in a minute. Let me just. Oops, that's not running. Let's make sure that our CMS application root directory is good to run. All right. So let's go to app, HTTP, routes. All right. We don't have to make it work, by the way, but I would just, I'm just going to make it go to the default right here. There we go. Let's go back here and let's just take this off. All right. So now we know that we can go to phpMyAdmin, 
then we can control our database information here, right? So let's create, we don't have to create, we have to create a database. We have to, this is the only thing we got to do here. So we create a database and let's just name it um, Laravel underscore CMS. All right. And let's just create it. So we know that. And now we don't have to deal with that, right? But we're going to have to come back to it in a little bit just to show you some of the um, results. So now all we have to do is go to terminal and you can visit your command prompt on Git or um, your terminal on the Mac. Or you can use, if you're using PHP Storm, you're welcome to use this little terminal we got here, okay? So now all we got to do is run the command PHP artisan migrate. Oh, before we do that, it's actually we need to go to the, that, the EMV file and we need to give it the name of the database and the password and all that information. So the database was what? Laravel underscore CMS. And the username for PHP MyAdmin by default is root and then the password is empty. All right. So this is how we connect. All right. Perfect. So now let's go back here and let's run PHP artists and migrate and then we click enter. And now it's going to say, okay, migration table created successfully. All right. Now let's go to PHP my admin and check it out. All right. We should have, I'm going to surprise you to show you what we have. Okay. Let's go to PHP my admin real quick. PHP my admin. All right, and now let's go to the Laravel CMS. And as you can see here, we have three tables. All right, the migrations table is created automatically because Laravel has to keep track of the migrations, right? So let's go back. We have the password resets table. Okay, we can look at the structure, the email, the token, and the created stamp. And we have the users table. And as you can see, we have the incremental ID right here, auto increment. We got Varkar for the name and email, Varkar for the password, limit of 60 characters, member token, and the timestamp right here. And create, when, you, when you use this function timestamps in the migration, it creates these two columns, created at and updated at. And it, it, it gives it a type of timestamp. It's really cool stuff, all right? Pretty cool. So now... In the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to create a migration and how to define our own values. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture. Take care.